Thank you. Okay. So where do you want me to start? Uh, whenever it begins, even maybe uh, if you can tell me a little bit about your childhood in Germany. That okay. I, I was born in Königsberg, which is now called Kaliningrad. Um, I had two sisters and my dad passed away when I was just four years old. But we lived a very comfortable life um, in Königsberg. I spent my first seven years there, but then my mother decided she couldn't live there on a, without financial support. So she moved back to her home, which was Frankfurt Order, which is a, it's a small town near Berlin. It's not that small anymore. And I lived with my grandfather, who was a, a Justizrat, if you know what that is, a Justizrat. He was a lawyer, but he was very active on the, on the courts. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, there was a lot of a higher position he had. So I went to school in Frankfurt, Oder, and that didn't last long because I was pursued on my way home many times and beaten up. Not severely, but beaten up, and what other, you know, what other kids will do. And so the decision was made to possibly send me to a school in Switzerland. That did not work. Uh, my grandfather had connections uh, in different countries, but that didn't work. And he finally did find a relative in London at the Warburn House, the Bloomsbury House, the Warburn House. And they arranged that I would join a kinder transport and go to London, go to England. Uh, it was ironic because my mother was still in Germany, my sisters were still in Germany, and I was just, I think 11 years old, and I got a suitcase with one pair of pants, and I was sent on this kinder transport to London. Uh, I was met there by nuns who were very nice, and they put me on a train to a place at the shore uh, called Westgate, it was near Dover. And I joined a British family who got paid for this, of course, to take care of me. Uh, they had a, a few other kids staying with them. Um, it was kind of decent, but it was not home. Uh, I was, I think I must have felt quite lonely on, 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 in, that, in that situation. Um, I did have a sponsor in England through my grandfather which was the Leighton family, which was actually a very prominent family in England, the Leighton Banking and the Leighton uh, Foundation. And they were my guardians. And uh, if I had a problem, they took care of me. Uh, it came much later. Uh, so I went to school and then the war started. And when Dunkirk was evacuated, we had to leave and I was an enemy alien being German and we had to leave and the family left with me because they wanted to get out of the beaches where the possible landings could be and we went to the Midlands and uh, I worked on a farm. I left school, I worked on a farm, I worked in a hotel as a waiter, I did all kinds of odd jobs. And I lived on with these people still in in Devonshire in England. And uh, it's not important, but one fine day I was riding a, a horse on the farm, and I was stopped by the police because I wasn't supposed to use any vehicles or any transportation. So they were going to put me into the Isle of Man which was a determined, a, 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 yeah, a camp for refugees. 
And that's where the garden of the Colonel Layton came in. He f sent me to London and he arranged that I go to school. Uh, I went to Alt. Uh, if you know what Alt, I'm sure you know the Alt organization. So I went to Leeds uh, and went to Alt to learn to be a, a mechanic. And uh, uh, I spent two years. Oh, well, yeah, two years in Leeds. And in the meantime, my mother finally got out uh, of, my sisters got out, uh, my mother got out of Germany after the war started, actually. She managed to pay her way out and came to, to England. Uh, I stayed in England, in London, and then I decided to go back to London and get a job. And I got all kinds of jobs. Uh, some were very good, some were not so good, but I, I lived in a boarding house and uh, through my sister, I met some American soldiers army officers who came to our home for lunch, for dinner. We always entertained somebody. And I was asked whether, uh, oh, I, excuse me, going backwards, I worked in the aircraft industry. And I worked for the Lancaster bombers and, uh, and uh, built the bombers. And the American people whom I met asked me whether I would be interested to become an interpreter and joined the American forces on a civilian basis to uh, go back when the war ended. And I said yes. So I went for training in London and joined the American forces as an officer status and was sent to Paris where I underwent more training and then I was joined a unit which I was supposed to be the interpreter. That unit was the original Doolittle squadron, which were Doolittle was the colonel who bombed Tokyo at the time. And I joined the 9th Air Force not as an active soldier but as an interpreter and uh, from, from Paris, I was sent to Austria to work for the American army there as an interpreter. And that led me into Mauthausen. And I was in Mauthausen, I think two days after the liberation. And um, I became an interpreter and interrogator there. Um, one of the f infamous people I met was Laval, who was the quizzling president of France in v Vichy France. And uh, I, I, but I couldn't interview him because I didn't speak any French and he didn't speak any English. Uh, but I did see the terrible things which were done in Mauthausen and I was there for about a week and uh, met people who I knew for years later on who escaped uh, uh, the gas chambers. And as a matter of fact, as a side story, uh, I met a young lady there who we weren't supposed to fraternize, but we did talk. And who told me that she f fell out of the gas chamber twice. The door wouldn't close and she was saved. Uh, we helped her with food and closing and that's, uh, I moved on and uh, I guess she moved on and never saw her again, of course, you know. I do have pictures so you know. <laughs> uh, I spent time in, in Austria and from Mauthausen, which was just a week, I was sent to Frankfurt. Uh, to become an interrogator for the United States Postal Service, which became 
in, which was in charge of the German mail. We examined every letter which went through Germany and discovered microfilms under the stamps for the Nazi movement to continue underground. And so it became a major job for this mail center uh, to look at all this mail and all the packages. And so and I traveled quite a bit to different centers uh, who ran, who examined this mail to see how, how things were going. And so I spent about two years doing that. And uh, then the uh, unit I belonged to was shipped back to the United States. And I had no way of going with them because I wasn't a US citizen. Uh, I was stateless. And uh, I went back to London and uh, found a job and had a fiancé in the army, which never worked out, unfortunately. <laughs> and I, I, tell, I tell you all my secrets. Uh, yeah. And uh, from London, this wasn't, she was an American citizen, she was in the army. I decided to go to the United States. Uh, so I came over in 1949, I came to the United States uh, with, the, with the intention of getting married to that particular person, but it, it just didn't work. You know, so sometimes things go wrong. What else can I tell you? <laughs> Um, can you please tell me um, about your arrival to the US? Um, did you get through New York or uh, like how do you remember this moment? Can you please describe it to me? Well, of course. Uh, I came to the US in 49 and I, I stayed in New York. Uh, my fiance at the time had arranged that I get a rented room in New York City. And I stayed in New York and got a job as a tool and die maker because I had some training at Ort, you know, so I knew what I was doing. And I worked as a tool and die maker in downtown New York. And uh, my, my, my uh, Mother, in the meantime, had passed away in England. She stayed in England. One of my sisters stayed in France for life, but she passed away in the meantime. And my other sister went to the States. So I had at least one relative there. And uh, uh, I began to get to know people from my hometown in Frankfurt. For some reason, we met by chance again. And that's uh, how I met my wife, through uh, going to uh, meetings with family members, other family members, and uh, that's how I met my wife. And so that was in 1949. I came in January to the United States in 49, and I got married in December of 49. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Okay. I brought up a, a wonderful family, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm still here. Where do you live right now? Also in New Jersey? No, no. I live in Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, I lived in 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 New York State for fifty years. Um, my kids grew up in in, in Westchester, New York. Uh, in in Rye Brook, which is part of Portchester, and um, I worked for years for the same company, about twenty years, into a specialized field of packaging, which I developed, and uh, I now live in Connecticut with my lifetime partner for the last twenty years, actually. Yeah. Uh, so we, we have a home in Stamford, Connecticut, and um, 
Fortunately, um, we never went, we never moved to Florida. Uh, it's not a good place to be at this point, I don't think. Uh, we do have a home in Florida, uh, but we will, we left it in March of this year. But uh, my family grew up in, in New York State. And, and, uh, you need to know more about my family. Um, I would actually like to ask you more about yourself right now, if that's okay. Sure. Go right ahead. Ask me, please. Okay. Um, so first, I would like to ask you, what is home for you today? What is home? What is home? It could be your state, a food that you like, um, maybe a family member. I, I didn't quite get that question. What is... Uh, where, you, where you feel at home or yeah, where you feel most at home? Oh, where do I feel most at home? Well, right so now I feel most at home here in Connecticut. You know, this has been my home for the last 20 years and I met a very charming lifetime partner mm -hmm. and we have lived here very happily since then. Um, my real home is still, I consider still England. Uh, I, I, I loved England and uh, uh, it was a place I uh, went to to be saved from the Holocaust. So I consider actually England my home. Uh, I, that's where I came from, through Germany, from Germany to England. So uh, even though I'm a loyal citizen, I still, to me, I always think back of the, of the life I had in England as a, a young man or young. And so, so England is really my first love as far as remembering a home. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and what, um, even though Connecticut or England is where you feel home the most, um, what do you remember um, from Europe before everything happened? Um, well, I, of course, I remember our life in, in, in Königsberg, even though I was a youngster. But I remember that. Uh, it, it was a pretty good life. Uh, my parents were in a very good financial position and we had a beautiful home there. That I remember that. And uh, um, I remember Frankfurt Order. Uh, those memories are not as pleasant. My grandfather was very stern and very tough to live with. But, uh, uh, as long as I could play chess, he was fine. <laughs> but uh, I was not very happy uh, uh, there. But but that's where I, I stayed um, until I went with the kinder transport. Um, I've been back to Germany a number of times, um, business-wise and uh, as a visitor. I... Uh, Okay. That's my phone. It shouldn't be. It should be off. Excuse me. It no, shouldn't be at all. Take your time. Um, I was. I. I considered. If, what, what? I lost my thought. Said you went back to Germany a few times. Yeah, I went back to Germany. I've always looked at the German generation, which is now the generation. They are not guilty of their parents' crimes. You, can, you can't be. Uh, you've got to be tolerant. Um, some people who come from, from Germany hold their hate and their grudge all through their life. Uh, didn't touch any German goods, didn't touch anything. It doesn't work that way. Um, uh, uh, yes, Germany... Uh, treated me terrible. Uh, I was fortunate enough to escape the, the Holocaust, fortunate enough to get out. But the new generation had nothing to do with it. And uh, uh, I have met wonderful people in, in Germany. Uh, and I don't hold any grudges. As, as, as a country, I think it's a beautiful country. Uh, 
And so uh, whatever happened a, uh, a lifetime ago, you cannot keep everybody guilty because then you never have peace, you know. And, 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 I love Israel. I've been to Israel many times. I have family in Israel. But my, as far as considering my home, it's basically uh, after Germany, it's England, which I consider today the, the, one of the best places I lived in afterwards. Yeah. And you spent some time briefly in Berlin as well, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I went to Berlin. I went to school in, in Berlin. Um, in, uh, when I went on the Kindertransport, I left that out altogether. I went to a, it was supposed to be a boarding school, but it wasn't really. It was a, a, a home for children who lost their parents. It was, uh, uh, I stayed in that home for years and went to school there, um, in Berlin. Uh, I spent, I think, two years in Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, well, I would like to also know, I, well, Eric, before everything, sent me your beautiful story, uh, the written um, uh, version of it, and I read that um, your, I think it was your grandfather that was an atheist, um, he didn't really maybe talk about religion, or this is as far as I understood. You are absolutely right. Um, I went to this like, um, this institution, I call it now an institution, in Berlin. Uh, they were uh, quite religious, it was a Jewish, uh, uh, Jewish home. Uh, I did, I did, my parents were atheists. My, my father was, my grandfather uh, was in charge of a synagogue, but he didn't observe anything. So I didn't learn much from him. But I did become Bar Mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I have learned a lot about Jewish life my kid, in the United States, of course, you know. Um, I had a, a good life, and, and, the, and this home was pretty good to me in a way. I met a lot of wonderful people there, um, and that's where I learned a lot about religion. You know, and, and, but my grandfather, uh, as long as he could put on a top hat and walk down to the synagogue and pulled out his gold watch to tell children what time it is, <laughs> uh, he had no interest in the religious functions. So I didn't, and my my. My parents definitely uh, uh, did not practice any kind of religion. They, they were atheists. I mean, I'm sure my mother was. My, my dad, I hardly knew, so I couldn't tell you that. But mm -hmm. uh, I was not brought up in the Jewish tradition, but I learned to bring up my kids uh, in the Jewish tradition, but uh, uh, a liberal Jewish tradition, you know, very liberal. Um, so when, when was it really when you, if you did at some point, um, started to identify uh, with Judaism, maybe when did you become more Jewish, if it ever happened? Well, my wife came from a very religious home, very religious, but very modern religious, in other words, uh, I learned from her when we got married, we established a Jewish home and she was quite very religious. So uh, I sort of learned from her uh, a lot about Judaism. I belonged to a synagogue for 50 years. Uh, so, uh, so my life changed completely, it took a 100% turn, you know, uh, that I coming from a completely non-religious uh, uh, home. Uh, we built a religious home with both my sons ob observe everything, and especially my son Peter, his, his Eric's dad. You know. uh, 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 so uh, 
I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't say that I'm very religious, mm -hmm. but I believe in the Jewish tradition and you've got to believe, you've got to believe in something. And uh, I, I respect all, all religions. I respect all, uh, I, I respect the Orthodox uh, Jewish, I don't agree with their thoughts, but I, I respect them. But um, I have turned around uh, today at my age, I've turned around in the last 50 years to become a, a, a member of the Jewish community. And that's my background, you know. So, and I learned it mostly from my wife by joining a synagogue. And she ran a very liberal tra Jewish traditional home. And so, so that has changed a great deal. I think I took a huge turnaround somewhere. I, di I didn't learn it in, 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 in England, but I, in, 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 uh, in Germany, before I left Germany, in that um, our, it's called, was the Auerbach home, A-U-B-A-C-H, Auerbach home. Um, I learned some of the religion because they were very religious. And um, I didn't like it, but they were very religious as far as uh, educating the children who lived there. Mm -hmm. um... Okay, so in connection to that, um, how did you feel um, that the immigrating Jews, when you immigrated to America, um, what was the feeling? How, how was the community accepted, all of the people that, uh, you know, survived the Holocaust or people like you that managed to escape? Um, how did the country um, treat you? Which country are you talking about, the United States? When you arrived, um, basically, um, when I arrived, I was more or less on my own. Um, uh, I didn't have any connection to the Jewish community in New York. Because, uh, I only gained that after I got married. Uh, um, I traveled quite a bit in the United States. And unfortunately, uh, there is racism uh, in the United States against the Jews. Uh, I always said uh, when, you, when I went to different states in the United States that when they persecuted the, the African Americans, I said, therefore, the grace of God go I, because the, the Jews are were not liked in this country, uh, they, uh, especially, the, unfortunately, especially German Jews. The German Jews were not accepted by the American Jewry. Yeah. American Jews said, leave us alone. You know, they, they, they could have helped a lot more to get people out. They just didn't do anything to help in the, the very limited help. Uh, the American Jews said, we have our nest egg here. Uh, let the German Jews just don't connect us. And uh, I noticed that in my synagogue, you know, I was still German. Uh, they were polite, uh, but I could never get that close to them because they, they looked upon German Jews as, I don't, I don't know, uh, they, they really looked upon us differently. Uh, they just didn't accept us. I don't know how it is today, you know, but uh, in, in, the, in the 70s and 80s, uh, um, certainly, as I went to smaller towns, uh, I, I felt that there is a certain anti-Semitism. It's not getting any better, I don't think. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have to agree sometimes. Um, and how how was adapting um, to your new life in the in the U.S.? Maybe it was easier because you were married, but um, you know your home was far away and everything that you knew. Um, so how was the adaptation? Did you have any language barriers? Um, no, I learned English 
in England very quickly. I went to school, I think I went to school four, we four weeks after I got there. The family I lived with, they taught me English. So the language was not a barrier. The accent, I couldn't lose, unfortunately. Um, but uh, then Kissinger has an accent too, you know, so uh, that's something you live with. Um, but the language I learned very quickly. I adopted I, uh, to the United States very quickly because here I found uh, a companion, a life companion. I built a family. I was busy building my own future. And so uh, this really became, even though I loved England, became a home away from home, you know. So uh, I spent a lifetime in the United States. And, and uh, uh, without any political feelings, I think it's a wonderful country. You know, to be in. Yes. Um, so basically, your decision to immigrate to the US was because of that person that you've met? Back? Well, yes, mostly uh, because uh, uh, I was close to getting married. Um, but also England didn't offer any opportunities after the war. They had major, major problems uh, with their own economy. So I thought that going to the United States would give me, you know, they said the streets were lined with gold, but they weren't lined with gold. But it gave me an opportunity to change my whole life and, uh, uh, and leave uh, uh, lots of things I didn't like in England, even though I was happy there. Uh, I, uh, the United States was uh, a good place for me to come to, you know. It was not only personal, and uh, most people came to the United States because they thought it was a better life, it's a better existence. As far as joining the Jewish community in the States, it's again a different story. You know, you can join it, they will accept you, but they don't accept you. Uh, I don't know how it is today. It could, things have changed. The younger generation is more tolerant than the generation I grew up with, you know. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, did you feel like you had any other options back in the day of immigration or um, did you really again just had this idea in your head and you said, okay, I'm gonna go for it? I had no other intentions. I came back from the uh, time I served as an interpreter. Uh, I uh, met a lot of wonderful people in the army and they, they couldn't understand why I couldn't go with them to the United States, but I wasn't a citizen at that time. Um, so I, w I was, I was uh, so glad to come to the United States. I made, it, it was an easy decision, personally a decision because I met somebody and secondly, I felt the opportunities were better because in England was a broken country too, you know, in the, after the war. Um, so I felt the United States had better opportunities for younger people. So that's why I came here, but basically, personally, and more of the belief that the opportunities are better to come to the States. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was the um, perception of Israel at the time? Did you have any friends that... Yes, we had my whole family from my wife's side was in Israel. Uh, we went to Israel. My son uh, uh, had a bus from Mitzvah in Israel. Mm -hmm. We had made many trips. I've been there since it was my lifetime partner. We went to Israel too. Um, going to Israel the first time is extremely emotional um, because you could finally feel that that country would have never stood for the Holocaust. I think they would have 
They, unfortunately, the German Jews couldn't lift any, they had no rifles, some did resist, you know, but it, it was a, a, a terrible situation, a terrible time uh, in, in Germany. And uh, Israel offered you so much more. Uh, it was a country, it's not perfect, uh, nothing is perfect, you know, uh, but uh, it's a country which is the backbone of the Jewish religion, even though it should not be a religious state. Uh, but it is, it, it, you can consider it as a home. People who came to, went to Israel said they finally came home. And uh, uh, I have a lot of respect for Israel. I've had wonderful times in Israel. I, I didn't spend years there, but I spent two weeks and or one week and uh, been a number of times there. And uh, my, my family lived there and they still do. And uh, uh, we are very close uh, and I respect their way of life. And I think it's a wonderful country. What they did out of nothing, it's amazing. It is amazing, uh, you know, what Israel has done. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like, <laughs> what is Israel for you, basically, after everything you described, um, how much, with full honesty, how much does it mean to you? Because home is somewhere else and... If I would have to, well, at, at, at my age, you don't go anywhere to hope, but if I would have to leave this country for any reason, political or whatever, but mostly politically, which uh, I would go to Israel, even though it's a difficult country to live in when you go older, you don't have language problems. I would consider Israel a first place to go to if I had a problem, uh, you know, and not anywhere else. Yes, you can go to Costa Rica, you can go to many places. Um, but my, uh, I, I love Israel as a country because it gave me the opportunity to, uh, to say, this, this is where our home is if I really wanted it to be. Uh, and my wife was a firm believer in Israel. She would have moved there right away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he came from Germany originally. Yeah. <laughs> ah. um, I would like to ask you now about Eric, if you don't mind, and if Eric doesn't mind. Sure. Um, so I also heard Eric's story, and I think the childhood was pretty unique uh, with uh, both languages at home and really living um, life with like one heart in two places, uh, which is what I sometimes feel too as a young person. Um, how do you feel about Eric uh, that's now living in Berlin? Uh, basically living what, what you had in the past. Well, what should I tell you? Um, Peter and Susie are very unique people. More than unique how they have educated and brought up Eric, Philip, Jacob, and Julia is one for the books. If all families would have that kind of background and that kind of respect for each other, it would be a wonderful world, but it isn't. They are uh, just a perfect family and uh, I'm very close to them. And uh, I couldn't find any criticism, you know, and say they should have done this, should have done that. Eric is building a new life with Anna. Um, and uh, I, I don't think he's going to come back to the United States. That's my opinion of you, Eric. I think you're going to stay in Europe. You're too, too European. And uh, I, I think uh, you're leaning towards Sweden, but uh, you're happy in Germany. And that I'm happy to see that, uh, uh, again, uh, some people might throw up their hand, how can he live in Germany? 
being from the background he comes from. On the contrary, that's the way to live, you know. And so I can't really find any criticism. Um, did they miss any of my birthdays? No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, they're a wonderful family. Yeah, I only, that's all I can say about Eric and his, and his, his brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to ask you a few last questions, if you don't mind. I don't. Um, <laughs> um, how do you feel that the events in the US, everything that's been happening right now, um, you know, with um, the black community, unfortunately, and with all the hate that's rising, um, does it make you feel um, like a minority? Uh, do you often think about your Jewish identity or do you really not? Yes. Uh, as I said earlier, I always used to say, therefore the grace of God go I. I saw chain gangs working in the south of this country when I first came here. Uh, uh, I saw the, the abuse of the Afro-American, whether they worked as a... As, and, uh, unfortunately, I hate to say this, especially in the early days when I was here by the Jewish community, they treated the blacks terrible. The black, the, but we used to say the blacks, the Afro-Americans were treated, uh, you can cross that out, please. I don't mean the blacks, I mean the Afro-Americans. Uh, they, they treated, they only considered them to shine their shoes and uh, do the laundry, you know. So that has changed. But uh, the Jewish community is no better than the rest of the country in tolerant, being tolerant, you know. Uh, uh, what the future will bring, uh, I think the, uh, the minority will finally get a foothold and uh, uh, they need patience. I mean, they've been patient for years and years, so little more patience. You can never win anything by a revolution, uh, only by time slowly to change things. Revolution don't work. They, they, they topple a... a a, an idea, the top of a religion, the top of, but it comes back to haunt them. And uh, you can't have a revolution, it doesn't work. It's got to be by, I think you call it evolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, Eric, if you have anything else to add, maybe a question if you have uh, in this forum. Um. I mean, of course, a lot. Um, we've talked about, you know, the political situation together in, in the US and how we're feeling about it quite often. Um, and, you know, echoes of the past as well um, mm -hmm. from Germany and seeing things that are happening in the US today. It's obviously not the same, but um, echoes and feeling uncomfortable by by what you're seeing as mm -hmm. well. I don't know, Opapa, if you want to elaborate a little on what you're seeing today in the country. I, I still see a lot of hatred and, uh, you know, it depends where you live in the United States, but uh, the the hatred doesn't go away overnight. Uh, the, 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 the Wallace uh, uh, Governor Wallace uh, hatred of the Jews uh, has gotten better, but uh, it hasn't gone away. Uh, people still don't don't like uh, the colored people. They just they, they will accept them, and it's amazing what the, what that community has done. But as I said, only time will tell. It'll take a long time still. But I think maybe this time there is a start somewhere. You know, with all the good things Martin Luther King did, and all uh, uh, the black community didn't cash in on it. They they sort of stayed still quietly because they were still scared. 
Uh, I think now things might change uh, for the, slowly, but it will, it will take time to be on equal footing, you know, so uh, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that would be it for my questions. Um, but I would really like to thank you again for your time and I I need to think how to return it to you and to all of the family. Uh, it's a lot to me and uh, I really appreciate every minute of everyone. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I told Eric and also Alan and Peter yesterday that I will send um, the piece when it will be like done on my end. And if you would like to go over it and maybe fix something or take something out, because I don't want anything that you guys don't want, you know, to be out there. Um, but otherwise, again, thank you. And I really wish that... I don't, I don't think I left anything out in my life. You know, I, I, uh, I think I told you more or less, uh, more, uh, I told you everything about my life. Uh, it's with all the difficulties, all the problems I had to establish myself. It was a, it was a good life. I was very happy. Uh, I had a wonderful, uh, uh, I have built a wonderful family. Um, and as far as my, my early years, no, they were not nice. It was terrible to grow up in, in, in Germany. Uh, going to school, there was an ordeal. Uh, uh, I belong to a Jewish organization, a youth group and we were beaten up continuously, you know. So the memories of Germany from those years are terrible, you know. Uh, I lost a beautiful home, I lost a beautiful home I grew up in. But these are material things, and uh, material things can be replaced, you know. Uh, in my mind, uh, I always say, how could this have happened? Uh, I come from a family, my father was in the army and, uh, and uh, my grandfather swore by the German constitution, you know, and I said, how could it happen? It is leadership, uh, you know, uh, uh, the leader of the Germans was just a guy out of nowhere who decided to take over the country and he burned the Senate, he burned the Reichstag and that was the end of it. Uh, as I said, leave politics out of it. We are facing a terrible future here. We are facing this. We are facing the same, except we won't have any camps. But we are facing the same problem as Germany faced in those days. It's, if it ends up as a dictatorship, people will be ruthless, and you can see it slowly in the elimination of people who were good in the federal government who are being thrown out left or right and it's being rebuilt as a completely uh, a dictatorship and this country better wake up you know that's uh, hopefully the young people will wake it up but they gotta they gotta do more than what they're doing you know mm -hmm. in other countries you have millions walking on their government's buildings trying to impress them to change Yes, we have a march once in a while, but we don't really do enough, you know. And I, I'm very concerned about that. Even though I'm, I'm a little older, and I still hope to be around a little bit. Uh, it's a dangerous situation we live in. Very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I can see why you're saying that, but I, I really hope it will everyone needs to wake up everywhere because it's uh, just getting worse even here but uh, i i hope for better days but yes i hope so where are you located um so i'm right now because of the situation i live between haifa and tel aviv uh haifa is where i grew up spent mm -hmm. my whole life um then it, after the army i moved to america and then i came back um so yeah, I usually when I when there is school, I live in Erzaliya, which is 
uh, where uh, the cousin lives, Elisheva. Yeah. I heard about her yesterday. You did? Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I can, I have the whole family tree in my head. I just need to... <laughs> She's a great person, Elisheva. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, right now I'm in Haifa, uh, but also in Tel Aviv sometimes. Uh, and it's it's nice. It's beautiful. I I also have a lot of criticism about the government, but it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's great here, and I I really hope everything will just end as quick as it started. Let's hope. Let's yeah. hope. I'll be.